In case you don't know me, I'm Kathy Hester, and welcome to my haunted Halloween kitchen. I want you to have a happy Halloween. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make a spooky swamp monster jackfruit gumbo. So the first thing we're going to do, because this is the plant-based Halloween class, right? So we're not going to be using any oil today. If you aren't plant-based and you want to use oil, you can. I'm going to make an oil-free roux though. So what this is, and I'll show you overhead, and this is gonna be the most exciting part, not really. We're gonna toast flour <laughs> in a pan with my arch nemesis, the induction burner. So let's get that down a little bit. So when you're making a roux, there are a couple of things that are important. Ooh. To make that creepy sound is super important. Um, and for now, we'll use my cute little Halloween spatula. You guys see that? So over about medium or medium high heat, we're toasting this oat flour. And so you don't really need to watch it the whole time, but you can see it a little bit right here. I'll move it up a little bit. There we go. Cause it's going to take, this is going to be one of the longest parts of the recipe. So here's the thing with oat flour. I encourage you not to buy pre ground oat flour unless you just find it on a really good sale because it's usually cheaper just to grind up rolled oats. And if you are eating gluten free, you want to make sure those oats are marked gluten free clearly on it or they could be cross contaminated. Oats don't contain gluten, but Evidently, they hang out with the other grains that do, and they get all kinds of contaminated. So with a roux, you're trying to do a couple of things. One, we're going to use it to thicken the gumbo. So a gumbo is like this really delicious spiced okra stew, usually. So we're going to be using um, butternut squash in this version. So we want it to thicken up. And so... Okra in, is really is an amazing vegetable and it really gets kind of slimy and gooey. And so it's perfect for stews because it thickens it up and makes it all yummy. Whereas in other things you might be like, that's kind of gross. It's not gross in this. So the roux also helps thicken it. But what's really important, especially in like a New Orleans, Louisiana kind of roux, is you want to add some dark umami flavor. And so the way you're going to do that is slowly toast this flour. And those of you who've taken classes for me before know I'm going to smell this 8,000 times. So your nose is the best way for you to figure out how this is cooking. So let's smell it now. And I can smell just like a hint of toasted oat, right? And that's really good. We want to keep it that way. What you don't want to smell at this time is something starting to burn. Because if you burn the roux, even though it's just flour, you have to throw it out and start again. So at low heat, stirring a lot is a better win than just trying to crank it up and getting it done soon. So we want this to get a couple of shades darker. Like kind of like graduate level roux would be brown and we're probably just going to go for like light brown you know not that deep dark brown i've seen roux that look darker than peanut butter so this is going to take a while so instead of making you just watch that let me see if i can get it where it's just about where i can get to it and I may turn it down just a wee bit so I don't burn mine. Okay. We got to keep checking on the gumbo, checking on our roux. And I think you guys can tell a little bit better with the overhead, um, the color on this. But again, your nose is going to tell you more about this than anything else is going to. The color is good to know. And see, I can smell it go a little bit shade darker. And I think I could go just a minute or two more. I'm going to turn it down to uh, a lower heat so I can keep doing this. 
but the darker it starts to smell, the quicker you have to check back in on it because that's going to be the difference between an amazing umami flavor from oats or burn stuff that you have to put in the trash and you have to do it all over again. So good. This is going to be so good. We're getting close. Okay, and again, let me let you see it from overhead because you can see it in a little more detail. And, and actually, I'll even show you, let me pull out just some regular oat flour. See, you can see the difference in, um, in the shades, right? Okay, so that should kind of help you. And you, if you're new at this and you're nervous, and you like things to be perfect. First, I say, take a deep breath. Life is too short for perfect. Nothing's ever perfect. And you'll probably, if by trying not to be perfect, you're going to make something spectacular. Okay. But if you just need a guideline, which is a better thing to think about, have a little bowl of the regular flour and keep checking, checking the color. Just as long as you're smelling it over and over again to make sure nothing's getting burned. Going to give it just another minute. Okay. I'm declaring it done and we are going to start cooking up some onions. So it's about a cup of minced onion and everybody's recipes is variable. So if you really like onions, put in more onions if you want to. Where you're going to get into trouble and where you hear bloggers say, why are they messing with my recipe? That's when someone says, I'm going to make this gluten-free, I'm going to make this roast beef gluten-free and vegan, right? Some things you can't do. But you can always add more onions. You can add more garlic if that's your jam. Okay. So we just want to cook these down a little bit. Usually my kind of go-to is um, when they're um, translucent. So you can tell they're real opaque white. And now they're kind of in between. I have this on fairly high heat. And we're going to add in some garlic, about three cloves of garlic. So now it smells all yummy, garlicky and oniony, all the good things. So let's go ahead. In this recipe, I didn't put um, celery in, but I'm going to go ahead. If in any gumbo, you can always put some celery or celery seed in. It's traditional, and I'm going to put in some bell pepper. And here's something that you might want to know about bell pepper. Like, it's nice when it's all pretty and multicolored and stuff, but in a pinch, you can use whichever one you have. Um, don't let I don't have an orange bell pepper ever get you to not make something, because you're breaking my heart if you do. Don't break my heart. Okay, now granted, a green bell pepper has a different flavor than a red bell pepper, but it's really slight. So also, if you hate green peppers, maybe you like red peppers. Oh, see, look at that. And see, you can see too that the onions are more translucent than they were before. All right, and about now, when I could cook this down a little bit more if I wanted to, but I'm, you don't have to. We're also going to, this is going to simmer for a while too. So let's go ahead, let's see that, and let's get some of this in here. We're going to put just a little sprinkle. We're going to repeat this a couple of times. So let's get that. Now, 
I do have an Instant Pot gumbo on plant-based Instant Pot. And see, this is a little thick on the bottom, so I'm going to add a little undisclosed water. This is why you're watching the class and not just getting the recipe. So, but you can see, and that's why we add it after we add the, do the aromatics, because they've loosened up. And now this looks a lot like a roux that you saw, went and sauteed onion in. It's real similar. It's going to look a little bit weird. It's going to break apart. And actually, maybe you should just see this. Just see it. No, it's okay. It looks like I just undid everything I did, but I did not. But we have to add extra liquid at some point. And now is that point. Okay. Now I'm going to put in my four cups of okra. These, this is just a pound of frozen okra. You get fresh okra, you use it. You got frozen okra, it doesn't even matter. If it's still frozen, you can put it in there. Because I was prepping for this class a little bit, surprise, right? You just thought I had all this up all the time. Okay, so we got some more stuff to put in here. We got some tomatoes. So I am, once again, proving that you don't have to do exactly, we're using fire roasted petite diced tomatoes. I've got one with roasted garlic and one plain. I don't want to use the ones with basil and fire roasted is fine. Not fire roasted is fine too. Oh, um, so we're going to put in these tomatoes and I'm putting in butternut squash because this is the plant-based Halloween. And I did want to show you too about the jackfruit because we haven't added the jackfruit, but I'm going to let this cook in there while we're doing that. And then we'll add the spices. What you're going to see is some stuff that looks a little unpleasant because that's kind of a grayish pinkish color. These are the seeds. This is a young jackfruit. So these are immature seeds and you can eat them. If they freak you out and you just really don't like it, you can take them out. So what I usually do is I just squish the top part like that, scrape these out, maybe break open the seeds a little bit. Because what I want this to do is resemble chicken. And then this piece, I just pull it off. And this is one of the reasons why I like it. Because if you're making a chicken noodle soup or something like that, it really looks like chicken and it's super fun. And I, I think that this was the first recipe I ever made with jackfruit back when I did um, the Ghoulish Gourmet, my little Halloween ebook. Get this in there. And I could have done this ahead of time. It's just one of the things, because I feel like people see that jackfruit in the chunks and they're like, what the what? What am I supposed to do? And now you know, right? It was easy peasy. Let me let you see overhead. So isn't it crazy though how much that looks kind of like chicken? So let's get some spices in there. So we got those in there. And again, just like I showed you with the roux, I can smell the Cajun seasoning. So chances are, if you can smell it, it's probably strong enough. We're going to taste this later, but tasting it right now isn't going to give us the full flavor of it. Let me let you see what we got going on so far too. Okay. And the bouillon is really going to just add a flavor. And you see how thick everything is? That's what the roux did right there. That's what made it not a soup. And also when you're doing a gumbo in the Instant Pot, if you try to put your, do your roux and put it in when you're sauteing onions and stuff, you're not going to be able to come up to pressure. So if you're interested in doing this or something like it in the Instant Pot, look up the mushroom gumbo on plant-based Instant Pot and it'll tell you how to do that. Let me test this with a fork really quick and then see. I'm probably going to have to put a lid on it. Yeah. It's getting a little bit okay, the um, butternut squash. So what I'm checking for, because like right now, that's the only thing that really has to cook a long time. So we want to make sure this butternut squash is cooked enough. So I'm going to turn it down. And I'm now going to find, I feel like I'm doing a magic trick. Um, the large top. Woohoo! 
<laughs> you, swamp monsters could have jumped out of there for as much stuff as in here. Okay, so we're going to turn this down just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and let it sit off to the side. And I think what I'm going to keep these spices over here because the most important thing, and if you guys can follow me on Healthy Slow Cooking on Facebook or Plant Based Instant Pot, but on Healthy Slow Cooking page, I've been doing some slow cooker live. So in the morning, I go and I put all the stuff together like this because this used to be a slow cooker recipe without a room. Um, and then in the evening, I come back. And then what we do is we reseason because that is what makes everything better. Everything is better when you reseason. So you normally do it when you're cooking on the stove. But for some reason, people don't tend to do it if they are um, using the slow cooker. And I don't know why. Let's get a look at this guy. We're going to Oh, he smells good. Doesn't it? These are squash goals. Okay. I've had it on low. Because really all we've been trying to do is cook that um, butternut squash up. And I'm scraping the bottom with a spatula because sometimes roux will kind of stick to the bottom a little bit. And those little burnt parts, that's from where I used um, fire roasted tomatoes instead of something else. So I'm going to go get, I actually made this afternoon some black forbidden rice using um, the rice cooker. So I like the black forbidden rice because it's super spooky and it adds a nice touch. Okay, we need the fork test. The fork test is to show me if our butternut squash is done. And it should be. Smash. Yep. So all the veggies are cooked and good in here. What that means now is that I need to taste and adjust these seasonings. So I'm just going to take a little taste of the broth. And I haven't added salt or pepper either. So I'm going to turn this off for a minute. Ooh, that's pretty good. So you're always, this is a place that you're starting at. This is not the place to think you're ending at. So I would like to add a little more Cajun spice. So I'm, this is gonna depend on how old your Cajun spice is, what brand you're using, all these things, how much you like it. So I'm probably gonna put a whole nother teaspoon in there. I'm also gonna put a little more Italian spices to, um, and this is just an Italian spice blend. Let's see what this one has. Does it tell us? Basil, oregano, marjoram, garlic, onion, rosemary, thyme, and chili. But it's not going to be spicy. It's just got a little bit of mm to it. Okay. So I suggest that you get these spices to where the level you like them, then add salt. Because you'll find that you'll end up using a lot less salt once the flavor is right, instead of just correcting with salt all the way through. If you don't use salt at all, that's perfectly fine. You can use your favorite salt-free blend, or what I do in a pinch is I put garlic powder, onion powder, and um, ground celery seed together and put some of that in there. So what I want to do, and while you keep seeing me stir this really good, if I don't stir it really good, the salt isn't going to melt and be distributed evenly. Okay. And if that's the case, then I'm going to taste the really salty part or the really unsalty part and make poor judgment decisions. And you can always have salt on the table, especially if you have family members with different medical needs or just tastes and let them put in their own salt and pepper. Okay. Yep, that's pretty good. You can put some pepper in there too if you want. So what I'm going to do is I've got a bowl over here and some forbidden rice. We're going to put together a bowl, and then I'm going to show you our finishing touch. So it doesn't need to be perfect or anything. Then I'm just going to take some of this gumbo and slide it around the sides. It's 
so pretty, isn't it? And with the butternut squash, it looks so Halloween-y. So the next part is super easy. And we'll move back to the front to show you that. Okay, so all we're gonna do is you have some sort of greens. My spinach seemed kind of weird. This is about a quarter cup. We may need to use a little more and about a cup of packed kale. This is red kale. So we'll see. It should still have that spooky swamp look to it. So all we're doing is trying to make like a little bit of a garnish. And you want it to get bubbly. Okay. And so it being bubbly makes it look more spooky. So this is the Halloween. Day. Like if the little jackfruit guys, the black rice and the little okra rounds are not enough spooky for you. We got more spooky coming. See how it got frothy a little bit? So that is the whole Swamp Monster Gumbo start to finish.